G-force. It's a term we hear all the time, whether it's used from NASA to SpaceX. However, what exactly is it, and how will it help us understand the science of Infinity War better? Be sure to beta test our new search engine, which allows you to easily surf all our content and much more. In honor of today's sci-fi special, type Star Wars in the search box. You can visit our search engine by clicking on the card above or the link in the description below. With that being said, let's dive right into today's lesson. Remember that cool scene from Infinity War where Thor had rockets swinging around on a small space pod before forging his hammer? Well, today, along with my good friend the roving naturalist, we'll be taking a look at the science behind this scene and determining whether or not it'd be plausible in real life. The most important factor in understanding the scene is G-force. But what exactly is G-force? G-force, put simply, is the force of gravity on an object due to the acceleration of gravity, which is measured in units called Gs. Right now, here on Earth, you're experiencing a G-force of 1 G due to the acceleration of gravity on Earth being 9.8 meters per second. There are certain circumstances where we can experience more G-force. For example, a car which gets into a collision while going at 30 miles per hour or about 48 kilometers per hour and wearing a non-stretching seatbelt harness while traveling a distance of 1 foot or 0 0.0003048 kilometers while applying the brakes will experience a g-force of about 30 g's or 30 times the acceleration the driver would normally experience due to the force of gravity which means in that instant the driver weighs 30 times more than what he or she normally weighs or let's take a look at another scenario rocket launches when the main engines ignite during the launch an astronaut can experience up to 3 G's. Anyways, now that we got the basics down, let's analyze the science behind this science fiction movie. Now we gotta assign the numbers. Because the scene happened a little too fast for me to remember, I'm gonna give myself a reasonable range for the length of the cable and the speed. For the cable, I estimate it to be anywhere from 25 to 45 feet, or for my international friends, 7.62 meters to 13.716 meters. And for the speed of rocket, I'll give myself a healthy margin of error, as it appeared he was going anywhere from 1 to 2 revolutions per second. Again, this scene did kind of happen fast, so it's really hard to pinpoint the exact numbers, so we're gonna have to guesstimate a reasonable range. Now, here comes the fun part, plugging into our equation and solving. So our range has a high end and a low end. Let's start off with the low end of the range of possible accelerations rocket faces because it's always good to be optimistic in life. On the low end of the acceleration range, we have rocket getting swung around at one revolution per second on a cable that's about 7.62 meters long. First, let's convert the revolutions per second into the linear velocity of rocket as he swings around, which is in meters per second. To do this, we multiply 2 pi times 7.62, which gives us 47.879 meters per second as a linear velocity. Keeping in touch with our formula v squared over r, we square 47.879 and divide it by 7.62 meters, which gives us a centripetal acceleration of 300.826 meters per second squared. Compare that to the acceleration of gravity here on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and that means Rocket would be experiencing an acceleration about 31 times greater than what he normally experiences due to the force of gravity, or 31 g's. Now let's take a look at the high end of the range. On the high end of the range, we have Rocky getting swung around at two revolutions per second on a cable that's 13.716 meters long. And following the same path as above, we know this means he has a linear velocity of about 172.36 meters per second. And as per our equation for centripetal acceleration, if we take this 172.36 meters per second, square it, and then divide it by 13.716 meters, we get a centripetal acceleration of about 2165.94 meters per second squared, which, compared to the acceleration of gravity here on Earth, means rocket is experiencing about 221.014 g's. Now the question is, can Rocket survive this? Well, that's what my friend the roving naturalist will be looking at on her channel in this two-part collab, so be sure to hop on to her channel to find out, and subscribe to this channel for more science videos.